I want to go. All right, start. Okay, everybody. Good morning. We're going to start with the Chumash of the day. Today is Tais Day. So we are holding in a very sad, uh, very happy and sad day of uh, in the story of the dedication of the temple. Very happy day because of the day that um, that God revealed Himself in the uh, temple. A very sad day because it's a day that um, the two sons of Aaron passed away on that day, and uh, Moshe Rabbeinu. Um, uh, Told the uh, told Aaron and his and his sons that they weren't allowed to leave the temple, and they had to continue the service. And this is part of this what happened in the in in their service, which they changed a little again. And as you're gonna see, uh, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu got a little bit angry, and we'll see the response. Verse we're only on chapter ten, verse sixteen. So it's chatas. And Moses thoroughly investigated concerning the sin offering the he goat. Darash Darash Meisha, Meisha Benu, went in to investigate. We did sort of, he found out that it was totally burnt. And he was so he got angry at Eliezer and his son, the Aaron's sons, saying, and Archie said, the he goat Rashi Chodesh Musaf. This was the additional offering of the Rish Chodesh, and that day the Chodesh Nishan three sin offering three sin offering goats was was sacrificed. A, a a goat of the sin offering the B the he goat of Nachshem Ben Ami Nadav that was brought to the first the day of dedication, and C the he goat additional offering of Rish Chodesh. So there were three sin he goat, he goats that were brought. Now all of these, the only one burnt is the one, this additional offering of Shredish. And why did they burn it? The sages say the Israel is divided on the matter. Some said that the burn, that they it was burnt on the account of the uncleanliness that are come in contact with it. While others say that it was burnt because Aaron's sons were earning him. Because this sacrifice came under the category of a holy sacrifice, they also they, that could also be sacrificed in the future generations. See, I mentioned before that there was a certain sacrifice only for that day, but for the day of dedication. So that Vaishla Benu told them they have to eat; they cannot; they're, they're not owning him. But they felt that a Swedish burnt offering, since it was an uh, it was it was uh, the for the new month, it was oh, will be an always an offering for generations to come. And if a coin was an onion, he was not allowed to eat that offering. So they felt that they should burn that off. They shouldn't eat it. So thus they deemed it fit to be burned for burning, as a law would acquire future generations. However, when it came to the holy sacrifice that were brought only for the time, like the other two he goats that was brought for the time, it was only brought for uh, for the dedicate for the, their in their their own uh, um, inauguration. And of Nachshim ben Aminadav was only brought one time when the dedication of the temple. That they had to eat. But they thought that this was the third one was an offering that was bought for a Shredish. So they felt they needed to, uh, they needed to uh, burn it. They weren't allowed to eat it. So that's what they thought. So they thought, however, when the Holy One of Sacrament was brought only time, like the others, they relied on Moshe, who said to them regarding the meal offering, eat. It eleven loaves, even though they were earning him, they were they were mourners, assuming that since the meal offering was bought only at that time, so I must must command apply to the holy sacrifice brought them at that time only. Darash darash, and Ashi says, what a double expression of instigation investigation. Why should I be asked why was the sacrifice burnt? Number two. Why have you? Why have the? Why have the other sacrifice not been eaten? Why did he question his nephews? So Rashi says, out of respect of Aaron, Moses turned his, to his sons. Aaron was an older brother, so he respected his older brother. He didn't challenge his older brother. 
And uh, Lamer, Amalehem, Ashmanil Dabi told them, Tell me an answer. Give me an answer. Why did you burn it? Verse 17. Why did you not eat the sin offering to the holy place? It's holy of holy. And it was given to you to carry the sin of the community, eat it. To forgive them. Hashem before before God. And now she says, why did you not eat the sin offering in the holy place? But have they eaten outside the holy place? Have they burnt it? Have they not burnt it? What then did Moshe meant when he said in the holy place? By phrasing the question this way, Moshe was asking Aaron's son, perhaps the sac- that sacrifice went out of the, of the hangings of the courtyard, became invalid. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's why he didn't need it. He was trying to give them a way out. He was trying to give them an answer. Maybe that the sacrifice became unfit. That's why he didn't need it. He prayed this Kedoshim. And it's holy of holy that it becomes invalid by going out of the, of, of the, the Beit HaMikdash. He said to him, no. Well, since it remained in the holy of holy in the holy place, why did you not eat it? Rashi says continues for the Kayan eats the sacrifice, and thereby the owners are granted atonement. So you could have brought atonement to the whole Jewish nation. Lastly, Savain Aidat to gain forgiveness for the sin of the community. From here we learn that the he goat was burnt, that was burnt was the he goat or Rosh which atones the sin of our cleanliness concerning the sanctuary and its holy sacrificial food for the sin offering of the eighth day of the investors and the sin offering of Nachshim and Avon were not brought to effect atonement. So this was the sacrifice of Rosh Chodesh that Moshe Rabbeinu, for the new month, that Moshe Rabbeinu was, was questioning. He wasn't questioning the other sacrifices. Verse 18. Ain Penima. Behold, its blood was not brought into the sanctuary with him. So you should have surely eaten it. I played this in the holy, in the base of Midosh. Kashetzi Vesia, I can manage it. Dirachi says, For if the blood would have brought into the holies, then you don't eat it. Then it's a chatos, it's a sin, any, any sin offering that the blood, the blood of the offering was brought into the temple, you don't eat of it. It's burnt outside. But this, this burnt offering, the blood was brought on the Mizbeah. So you should have eaten it. Like I command you concerning the Mincha. Verse number 19. So Aaron spoke to Moses. Today did they offer up their sin offering. I say Lossam and their burnt offering. Hashem before God. But the Kreno Isikaela, but a tragic event like this befall me. And if I would eat in the sin offering today, Ayita Baina Hashem, would it be pleased by God? What was his answer? So, first of all, it's very interesting that, that Rashi, it's a little Rashi, the expression of Dibur, a Daber, uh, in scripture, less followed by expression of Lamer. Always donates boldness, as they say, and the people thus spoke. They daber. Uh, so it's a daber. Thus, the verse Aaron boldly respond to Moses' investigation. It's possible that Moses addresses his anger to Leoz and so Aaron answers. Why, why is Aaron answering? However, this demonstrates to us the behavior of Aaron's son, sons was only out of respect for their father and their teacher, Moses. He said, inappropriate that while the father was sitting in front of us, we should answer in his presence. And it's inappropriate that a disciple should refute his master. So they didn't say anything. Moshe Rabbeinu asked a question and they didn't answer because they didn't want to disprove the Moshe Rabbeinu. One might suggest that the sons did not respond because Eliezer was not capable. That's not true because we know Eliezer was very capable of speaking. And when Eliezer wanted to speak, even in front of Moshe Rabbeinu, he spoke. So over here, he didn't want to contradict Moshe Rabbeinu. Shows the respect that his nephews had to Moshe Rabbeinu. And that's why the one who responded was Aaron. 
So Moshe Rabbeinu showed respect to Aaron to speak to his sons. And the sons of Aaron showed respect, showed respect to their father and their uncle that they didn't respond. And Moshe and Aaron responded. What was the response? What is he saying? He could have simply said, such tragic events like this have befallen me. Rather, Moshe said to them, did you perhaps sprinkle its blood while, I, while you were in them? And as you probably know, an Oynan who performs a service that sacrifice is valid, I said to him, hey, Mekribu, but they did offer the sacrifice. They are ordinary Kehanim, for whom the law of invalidation by Oynan applies. I offer them up, for I am a Kohen Gadol. And a Kohen Gadol is, is permitted to offer the sacrifice while he's in Ace. I know the law, Aaron said. I know the law. I know the law. You don't have to tell me the law. I taught it well to me the last seven days. I know the law. But by these words, Aaron was effectively saying, my point would be just as valid. Even if those who died were not my sons, but other relatives for whom I am obligated to mourn as an oinen. Like these, such as the those in, 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 enumerated in the portion of the Kehanim, the Pashas Emmer, for whom a Koyim may become unclean, his father, his mother. And if I've eaten the sin offering today, literally, and I ate the sin offering, however, here the meaning is, but if I had eaten the sin offering, would it be pleasing to the Lord? Hayoyim today, when it would have been pleasing to the Lord, however, tonight I could have eaten it because an oinan is permitted to eat a sacrifice at night. But one is considered oinan only the day of burial. Hashem. If you heard this specific law that an oinan may eat a holy sacrifice bought exclusively for a special occasion, like the people's offering of the Gate of Nachshon, both offered just today. You will have no right to be lenient regarding the Lord, regarding the holy sacrifice, offer for future generation, like the sacrifice of Israelish. So I followed you in the laws of Nachshon's sacrifice, the sacrifice of the, of, of the Nasi. I followed you in the law, the sacrifice that is connected to our inauguration. But would I follow you in the law of the Israelish sacrifice? Would God be happy? I don't think God would be happy if I didn't burn the sacrifice that was not only for that time only, but was for the generations to come. And therefore, I believe that I am obligated to eat, to burn that sacrifice and not eat it. You probably made a mistake, Moses. By Yishma Moshe, Moshe heard what he said. By Yitabein, and he was pleased with that. Now she says a beautiful expression. Moses admitted that Aaron was correct. And it was not a shame. He could, could, he could have cut it up saying, I have not heard of this law. And Moshe frankly said to Aaron, you are right. I did hear that an oinim must not eat on a sacrifice that will be offered in future generations. But I forgot. I forgot. The Gemara says, that this is one of the times that Moshe Rabbeinu forgot a law because he got angry. When he saw that they didn't eat it, he got angry. And he, because he got angry, he forgot the law that that he that he that uh, that an oinin, the koyin, that that uh, that that is mourning, has to eat is not allowed to eat a sacrifice that he brings. He has to not eat it. He has to in this burn in this situation of this. Sin offering, he had to burn it. The sacrifices that were only on that day, they had to eat. But the sacrifice that was going to be brought in future generations, every month, a carbon chatas, a sin offering that would be brought a generation to come, he was not allowed to eat it. So Moshe Rabbeinu Aaron responded to him correctly. He said, you, 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 he spent correctly. He said to him, did you not learn the law? Moshe Rabbeinu said, you're right. I did learn the law, but I forgot. I knew it correct. So that's the end of the Chumash of today.
We continue the Tanya of the day. Today is the 19th day of Nisan. And the Alter Rebbe is continuing to try to explain to us that there's a concept of, of, of Yira and Ava. These are the two basic components that, uh, that a Yid, that a Jew, needs to use to the service of God. But after Hashem Alekecha, you have to love God. And we are raised to Hashem you have to, you have to be afraid. You have to be at the aspect of fear. As the Alter Rebbe brought down yesterday, you have to serve God. You have a concept of a child. You are the, you are the children of God. And then there's a concept, to me, the Jewish nation, are servants. So we need to have sometimes, most of our lives, we are sometimes like children and sometimes like servants. We can reach up to a level where we're both children and servants at the same time. But that's, as the Alter Rebbe ended yesterday in Tanya, that's Yiddi law. That's the higher level of fear where a Jew reaches up to the level of awe of God. And in that situation, he has both concepts of love of God and of oneness of God at the same time. But we're not at that level. Most people are not at that level. And most of us, find it as it says, but what of one who finds it impossible to arouse even a feeling of intellectual awe of God? What happens if a person doesn't have that capability? He doesn't have the capability to bring upon himself an oneness of God. He cannot be afraid of God. He doesn't have, he doesn't have that capability. However, we'll go now on to say that since this individual too meditates upon the above mentioned concepts, and furthermore, his intent during the, during, during the study of Torah and its performance of mitzvahs is to serve God. These activities are therefore deemed to constitute a complete valid form of service. This is a very fascinating concept. Now, the Rebbe is going to tell us that that's the, that's the concept that the, the Gemara said, that not everything you can do for the right reason. You should do something, you should do something also for not the right reason, but for the not the right reason comes the right reason. Now Dalta Rebbe explains. Furthermore, even in the case of an individual, even in his mind and his thought, feels no fear or shame. Meaning, individual who is not moved by his contemplation of God's uniquely, God uniquely bestowed his kingdom upon him, and furthermore is not moved by the consideration that God is scrutinizing him to see if he's serving him is fitting. He doesn't, doesn't not move. He's a, he's a heart of stone. Why? Dr. Rebbe, I apologize. Dr. Rebbe gives a different reason why. <laughs> On account of his limited grade of his soul. His soul is a very, comes from the, his soul that comes into his body is very limited. It originated in the lower degree of the 10 spheres of the world of Asir. So the soul of this individual derived from the world of, of, of creation the lowest of the four worlds. Moreover, within this world itself, it originated from the lowest degree of the tense that span it. Since his soul stems from such a low level, he finds it impossible to reveal within himself a sensitivity to godliness, to experience an intellectual fear of God. He does not have that capability. al Rebbe says, Nevertheless, since his intent, he's working on it. He's trying. He's just not walking away from the, the service of God. He is struggling with it. Since he's is he, he, since he's his intent in his service is to serve the king. That's what he's doing. Since he's trying, even though that through his trying, it's not happening. It's just not creating 
a yidah. It's not creating a fear and awe of God. It's not creating a love, a love of God either. Don't feel bad. The Abishta, God doesn't want you to do something you cannot do. The Abishta wants from you your avoider. If that is your service, then Alta Rebbe says, Harei zu avoida gemura. But it's unequivocally a complete service. Don't think you're doing a half a service. Don't think you're doing a quarter of a service. You're doing what you can do. And God does not ask from you something you cannot do. And since you're not capable of creating this, uh, this yidah, then, then you're not capable. And you do your best. At least you're trying to create a yidah. You're trying to create an aspect of fear. For fear and service, because two concepts, Alter Rebbe says. There's a concept of service and there's a concept of fear. And the aspect, these two mitzvahs, and they did not exclude each other. Thus, although this individual fails to fulfill the command of fear of God, a fear must be felt within one's heart and it leads to which one mind is nevertheless able to fulfill the precept of divine service. You need to be in the service. So if you don't feel the, the fear, you're still in the service. You're still doing an avoida. It's a very important thing. Because many of us I know many of us, we try and we, we work and it doesn't affect us for some reason. That doesn't mean that you didn't serve God. As long as you're trying, as long as you're involved, that is what the Abishta wants. That is the service. And as Alter Rebbe said, said before, it's not a quarter of a service. It's not a half a service. It's a complete service. 100%. As long as you're honest. Not every one of us <clears throat> can be inspired. We're inspired to have fear. We're inspired to have love. We're not capable. It doesn't make us bad people. Not only does it make us bad people. Actually, this is chapter 41. The, the, we're in the third part of chapter 41. So this is unbelievable concept out that Abba does explain to us. This is an unbelievable concept that we should all realize, because it's not, it's not all or nothing. This is an important thing Siddhis teaches us. It's not all or nothing when it comes to God. If it comes to another human being, it's all or nothing. But it's not when it comes to God. God wants your all. God wants my all. That's the question. Is it my all? And if it's my all, then it's fine. Even though it's not God's all. Because my all is what God is looking for. By God, my all is all. But I have to be honest. If I'm not honest, then God doesn't I fool myself. For a fool to fool himself is not a chachma. It's not a great wisdom. I have to be honest, this is what I'm trying. I got up, I daven, and I try to create a, a, through my davening a fear of God, a love. Didn't go. I didn't feel it, but I got up my daven. I did the mitzvah. I got up and I did it. That service is already. So it didn't create a love. It didn't create a fear. That's not the end of the situation. Otherwise it would, maybe one day it would. But the problem is that most of us give up since we don't feel that, uh, that emotional connection. We don't feel the emotional inspiration. Oh, it means we're not we're with us to waste of time. We didn't accomplish anything. No, 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 the Alter Rebbe tells us. This is a complete service. Very powerful. Again, it's so beautiful in Tanya. Uh, the Alter Rebbe puts the power back in your hand. So don't put yourself down. That you're not, you're not uh, getting these emotional uh, feelings and these emotional concepts. You're not capable. Not everybody's capable to, 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 to get an emotion from a mitzvah or from the learning of Torah or from the davening 
or from their own contemplation and meditation. So it doesn't work for them. For whatever reason, maybe they, as Dr. ever said, maybe the soul is such a spark in them that it doesn't uh, have great effect on him, on his physical emotions. So this is a very, this is very powerful. After all, this to be said and done, the Alter Rebbe will now say that although this person fails to experience the fear in his mind, since he thinks about these ideas, which should take, which should, which should evoke the fear, he fulfills. Wow, this is even more powerful. He fulfilling, he's fulfilling the command of fear of God. Well, it's, uh, it's, let's see how the Alter Rebbe says. <laughs> Furthermore, losing my uh, my breath, my, 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 I'm losing my, I'm losing my, my breath for this unbelievable thing that Alter Rebbe is going to tell us. He's going to give us such unbelievable things that right now. Furthermore, as a matter of fact, not oh, he's not only fulfilling the obligation of the service of God. I'm telling you, God He's fulfilling the command to fear God by introducing the fear in his thought, by thinking about it, seeking to arouse it. That that I'm going to think about fear of God, and I can think for today, tomorrow about fear of God, but it's not creating a fear. I can think about the oneness of God, and it's not creating an awe. You know, the Ramah says, if you think about the oneness of God, after that episode, you think about the oneness of God, it should create an awe. It does. I think about the oneness of God. I'm, the whole world is so big and vast, I'm nothing, and it doesn't create an honor. It's not happy. It's not creating an awe. I don't feel the awe, even though I'm thinking about it. So now that Abba says, this thought that I'm thinking about it is creating a fear. You're doing the mitzvah of fear of God. Why? Because at this hour, in this moment, murder, shamayim, all of our companions, at this moment, he's thinking about it. That moment, he's thinking about the fear of God. He's thinking about it. The murder bots have done have a bubble bubble. It's like the fear of a presence of an ordinary mortal. She ain't a melech That's not even a king who is watching it. Right? So if you think about somebody else is watching me, you know, when, somebody, when somebody else thinks somebody's watching him, he feels a little bit uh, ashamed, a little bit uh, self-conscious. Not that we're uncomfortable when people look at us because it suddenly makes us self-conscious. So when I think about a moment that the Hamish is watching me, I hopefully I'm thinking about it. I could have been thinking about something else. I'm thinking about that God is watching over me. And it stops him from doing something if he thinks about it. If I think about it, the time I'm thinking about it, I'm not going to do something bad because I'm thinking about it. So, and you know what? This is called fear. And Rabbi Yechem Zakeh said to his students before he died, he said, My only wish for you is that you should have the fear of heaven like you fear a human being. Worrying about the fear of heaven like some kind of a master, unbelievable force. I wish that you had the fear of heaven like you're afraid of some, like you're afraid somebody else is looking. You're, everybody's embarrassed. We won't do things when the other person is looking. I wish you had that fear. Be afraid of God like your face somebody's looking. Teda, he responds that the proof that it, this is indeed true form of fear is follows. Most people, when they do a sin, they say, I hope nobody's looking. I hope nobody's looking. I don't want to be caught. Russian in America, I don't want to cut my pants down. I don't want to be caught. I don't want to be I'm embarrassed when somebody else sees it. I'm embarrassed. But he doesn't do it in public. That's the fear. If we, we had that fear, like somebody else is looking, that God is looking, you know what? If that is alone, well, well that, that's a very low level of fear that you're embarrassed somebody else. So that alone is good enough. That's the mitzvah. This, however, fear is termed yiratata, is a very low level of fear. Yiratschet, fear of sin, which proceeds with them. This is 
this is the lower level of fear. There's many grades to the lower level of fear, but it's also yira. You cannot take away from it. Why does a person do, does does a sin? Because he doesn't even think that God's watching. If a person thinks that God's watching, that's in his mind, he won't do it. Even though it's immature fear. I'm afraid God's watching. He's gotten something. I'm getting embarrassed. God caught me. Very low level of fear. It's not going to awaken up a fear of God. It's not going to awaken up a fear of uh, emotional, surely, of love of God. It's going to stop him from doing a sin. Fine. Do that. And that is love. That is fear. That is the mitzvah. And the higher fear is the fear of, of embarrassment. So you're embarrassed or over, overawed by God's presence. That's the law. That's the higher level of fear. The yira, the yira, as it's brought down, there's two kinds of fear. The lower level of fear, which leads to performance of mitzvahs, and the higher level of fear, which results from a proper performance of the Torah mitzvahs. So therefore, don't feel bad that you only can reach to yira tata. Don't feel that bad, because that's the mitzvah. The mitzvah by God is to have yira, whether it's the higher level of, law, of fear or it's the lower level of fear. There's no, there's no, oh, if you don't have yira in law, you don't have fear. Oh, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have uh, the, high, the highest thing, you don't have nothing. No, if you're capable only of the lower level of fear, then that's your service. Then that's my service. If I'm to only have yira tata, I can only have the lower level of fear that I'm afraid of God. I think about it. I say, oh, God's going to punish me. Fine. That's your service. And you, you accomplished that level of fear. I will believe yira cloud. But if you say there's no fear at all, then forget it. No fear is nothing. Everybody, there's a mitzvah in the Torah, you have to have a concept of fear of God. That's for sure. So take away fear is nothing. Don't, whatever fear you have, whatever year is in your mind is fine, is the mitzvah, and it's a complete service. But if you don't have fear at all, it doesn't go above. Like a bird that cannot fly with one wing. The why? Because the love and fear are like two wings of a bird, as it's mentioned in Zayah. So too, and so too, I tell you the same thing. If you serve God with fear alone, that's because you're afraid of Him. You also can't fly above. He can't This also doesn't work. Doesn't work. Fear alone. Guilt. Fear. Gehenim. Does not work. He can't That's like I told you. Love alone is only one, 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 uh, one wing. So to fear alone is one wing. It's not going to go above. Even though you're doing the service of a servant. Because everybody has to have both. You have to have the service of a servant. You have to have the service of a son. You have to have the service of fear. You have to have the service of love. To awaken up the love of God. Which is hidden in his heart. Should be alive in his mind. You have to do that. Lisker. To remember his love of God, in his thought, in his will, the dafka by his to cleave to God. You have to have love of God too. You cannot just have fear of God. You gotta have both. You need to have love of God. You need a fear of God. To whatever you're capable, nobody's asking for you anything more than what you are capable. And this should be. His kavana, his intent in any aspect of learning, in any mitzvah that he does, the dafka by nafshelikis to the cleave his divine soul, the chayunis and his vifying soul to bring them together, and their garments, 
which is machshava, dibra, ma'isa, thought, speech, and action, that they should be can cleave to God, to God, to cleave to Him. Kenitzgalel, as mentioned. So, in summary, a Jew's divine service must embrace both that of a son who serves his father out of love and that of a servant who serves his master out of fear and ultimately out of love. And that ends the Tanya of the day. Beautiful, truly beautiful Tanya of this day. This is chapter 41 of, Chant of Tanya. We are in the third part of chapter 41 of Tanya. My friends, today is the 19th day of the month. And uh, the Tilim of the day is chapter 90 till 96. 90 till 96. And you would have said the Chitas of the day. See you tomorrow, 8.05. Today was 8.09. I apologize, see you tomorrow after eight. We'll continue with the Tanya of the day and have a great day, everybody. Good morning. You too, Rabbi. Thank you so much.